something has survived. That was the tagline for the Lost World Jurassic Park movie. And what I'm going to be playing today is the Lost World Jurassic Park Arcade. My name is Professor Renegade, and I hope that you'll get some enjoyment uh, out of me doing this let's play slash retrospective of a very classic uh, and a very well-known light gun shooter from the uh, 1997. Um, I'm gonna let this uh, play over again because there's an opening movie that's actually pretty cool to watch. Uh, well, first we have the demo, and then it's going to go into the opening movie. Uh, so, like I said, this released in 1997. Uh, <laughs> the graphics of the people don't hold up well. Uh, sorry, the models, I should say, the, of the NPCs don't hold up well, but the, the models of the dinosaurs and the raptors and all that stuff hold up great, uh, in my opinion. And, uh, just to give you a, uh, what we're, what we're going to be doing today... Uh, you know, we're just gonna be fucking playing some fucking Jurassic Park. In my opinion, this is probably one of the best light gun games, uh, of all time. Maybe the best. Uh, so this is the opening, uh, movie that's not the demo. You got, uh, shows all the dinosaurs you will encounter. Shows a stegosaurus here. You never actually fight a stegosaurus in the game. You pass by them. Uh, over a score screen, uh, but otherwise they don't show up in the game that often. There's a T-Rex, the Dilophosaurus, the Dilophosaurus only show up once in the first stage. The Raptors are the main mooks of the game, and this is Jurassic Park, the Lost World. Or the Lost World Jurassic Park, whatever you want. So let's get right into it. Uh, can I... No? Do I gotta insert a coin? Oh, shoot. That's... <laughs> that is the, uh, the game menu. The... The... If you're the, uh, if you own the arcade game. Obviously, I'm playing the, uh, PC. So, you know, this is not the actual cabinet. Uh, but, you know, um... How else am I gonna fucking record this thing? There's no way I'm gonna be able to fucking get a cabinet and friggin' record it. Uh, so anyway, if I can just insert a coin, there we go. So I'm just gonna insert nine coins. Uh, so this is the tutorial screen, it's in Japanese, uh, but basically what it uh, uh, boils down to is that you have a gun, a light gun, and five bullets to shoot. And whenever you need to reload, when you were in, in the arcade, you would have to point your gun away from the screen. In order to reload. Uh, and this game is very fast, it's very frantic at times, and having only five bullets makes for very uh, fast-paced gameplay. So, uh, with nine credits in, uh, I guess it's time to start. Um, let's do it. In Gen, our ingenuity. So we got the difficulty select, uh, but it's not actually difficulties. So I'm going to go on Beginner, and if you choose Beginner, it'll start you off on Stage 1. If you choose Expert, it's not a different difficulty, it'll just start you off on Stage 3, where the game gets harder. Shuffle, though, uh, we'll get to Shuffle in a bit, once I, once I beat, this, uh, beat this game. So, the plot of this game is very simple. Uh, basically, you play a bunch of hunters from InGen, I believe. Uh, and then you have to find and save Ian and Sarah, who are still on the island, and in the process, escape the island your, uh, yourself. Uh, so, again, here's the raptors. Uh, there's a dead triceratops right there. Um, the raptors come in a few varieties. There's three of them. So you have these uh, orange and black ones with tiger stripes. Uh, those are the male ones. And then you have the brown ones, which we might see one here. No, there's uh, just something else here. Uh, there's brown ones, which are the females. And then, oh, man, can I save this guy? Ah, oh, crap. Killed him. Uh, so there's uh, the females, which are brown. 
And then there's a third raptor that's green, and they take uh, two or three shots to kill. They're much harder to kill than the regular raptors. Uh, and they're very fast, you know, as raptors are. And then we're getting into the Dilophosaurus di 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 right now. So Ian and Sarah went down that slope, but oh no, they're spitting at, uh, poison. So these can be tricky in the first time, but generally speaking, uh, once their frills go up, that's when you want to shoot them. Or ideally before their frills go up, because that's just an indicator. See, it just happened there. They spat at me and I took damage. So uh, once their frills go up, that's when uh, they'll spit. This part's hard. Uh, you gotta shoot these raptors off the Triceratops, uh, and if you shoot the Triceratops, you're gonna fail like I did. And what happens when you fail sections like these, uh, you'll pay for it by tr facing a bunch of raptors, as we're doing right now. And I remember this part being pretty hard in the arcade. Uh, like, I was a kid, uh, when I played this in the arcade. Um, ironically, uh... I, uh, me and my brother were not allowed to um, watch the movies because, you know, our parents thought they were too violent. But whenever our dad would take us to the arcade, this would be the one game that we'd fucking go to right away. And it was super popular with everyone who went to this specific arcade. Uh, that, it was the one that people would line up for. Uh, and it was fun, because Jurassic Park was big at the time. And, okay, so here's one of the, uh, green raptors. And, uh, sometimes they'll show up and, uh, call the other raptors. But once you shoot them, the other raptors will run away. So there's your points. If you got extra coins in the machine, it'll give you a bonus. And here we got the copies. So yeah, as I was saying, uh, and if you saw, uh, actually, before I get back to that, uh, if you look closely, uh, on that score screen, you would have seen the, uh, Segasaurus models there. Uh, so anyway, as I was saying, um, wasn't allowed to watch Jurassic Park, but we were allowed to play the arcade game, and, you know, we fucking, we probably, uh, you know, got killed by the Raptors in stage one so many fucking times, uh, before we made it even to the first boss. Uh, and then, you know, it would be somebody else's turn because there would be lineups for this thing. Uh, but it was a lot harder playing it on the arcade than, uh, oh, there's a power bar up there. Um, it was a lot harder playing it on the arcade than, uh, you know, on the PC because on, in the arcade you didn't have this targeting reticle here. Uh, you would have to, you know, like there'd be nothing. It was a light gun game, so you would have to once you shot, like once you'd fire a bullet, then you'd see where you're shooting and then you'd kind of have to like, you know, shoot, like, you know, a fucking light gun game. Uh, anyway, here's this next, uh, the first boss, the T-Rex female. And there she is trying to come after us. So, two ways you can do damage, you can just fucking shoot on her. But the main way to do damage on the boss is to hit these targets that show up. And they'll stay there for a certain amount of time, and then, oh shit, I didn't get them all, so uh, she'll do damage to you. And so this is the first phase of the T-Rex female boss. She'll run, and you gotta do damage, and she's already almost out of half health. Uh, she'll do this. She, uh, bosses will hit debris some time to throw at you. And uh, she's gonna run forward. So Petra the Pterodons over there. Oh, I just said Petrodons. Uh, anyway, so here she here she is again, uh, giving us a big old smile, and a bunch of targets show up. You gotta shoot them, and she's almost dead. Now, if you're playing with two players, what will happen is that sometimes the T-Rex or whatever uh, whatever whatever boss you're facing, they will pick up and. Uh, they will pick up the other player, and then the other player will have to mash the button, the arcade button, uh, while the other person shoots targets. And if you miss the targets while uh, the other person is trying to survive, then the other person will take damage. And here we are, second se uh, second level, Lakeside. You got some uh, Corythosauruses, some Parasauroplos, and uh, Patasauruses. You shoot this one to get some points, and then this one's not doesn't really seem too happy. It's gonna stomp on us. Oh, reload! Oh, 
That's a really cool effect there, though. How, how it, uh, broke the screen. Or the window, rather. So, yeah. That one, not too hard to take care of, even though I just took damage. This one's pretty hard to do, though, because, yeah, uh, you have a small targets on the tail, and it's constantly moving. Very frantic. frantic. Uh, somehow I managed to not take damage from the tail yet, or at all. This next section is hard. Yeah, just shoot this thing's ass. I'll probably show the fail state for that later, it's actually quite funny. Uh, so right there, that is a grenade launcher. I don't know if I got it. No, I didn't get it. That's okay. Sometimes you'll get weapon power-ups like the grenade launcher, and they'll last for a few seconds and have unlimited ammo. But, you know, the downside is that it lasts for a few seconds. Uh, this is quite a hard part, because... Uh, raptors are moving pretty fast, and when they actually come after you... Uh, they get even faster. Uh, so you probably noticed right by now that this it does this doesn't this game this doesn't really resemble the movie The Lost World too much. And I know The Lost World gets a lot of flack. It isn't exactly the best Jurassic Park movie. Oh fuck! I didn't say it. Uh, it's, a lot of people say it's not the best Jurassic Park movie. Some people say it's even the worst, which I disagree. Three is obviously the worst. Uh, but this game does an excellent job of uh, recreating at least a version of Isla Sorna, or Site B if you'd rather, uh, that, you know, the developers had in mind. Uh, so we got a bunch of, like, broken uh, wind generators in the background there, which is pretty cool. Uh, interesting to note, though, uh, both the movie version and the book version of Isla Sorna, oh, here's one of those green raptors. Um, both the movie and book version of Issa Sorna do not have... Oh, we'll have some Pachycephalosauruses right here. Uh, if you listen closely, the, the Pachycephalosauruses are Cephalosauri, I guess? I don't know. Uh, let me put some more credits in. Uh, they actually have the T-Rex sound bite. And, uh, if you shoot them in the head, they'll stagger and then you'd have to shoot them again, but it's better to shoot them in the body if you want to one-shot them. Anyway, as I was saying about Site B uh, and its portrayal here, uh, so you had the wind generators back there, but both the movie and the book versions, uh, the Lost World book, that is, uh, of Site B, uh, run on geothermal power rather than uh, wind energy. Uh, but, you know, it's not beyond the uh, realm of disbelief that, you know, this is one of the wind energy. Uh, or, you know, wind generators, I should say. So, second boss, uh, Dino Uh, you can't shoot him while he's in the water. Uh, and he's gonna come up, and because you can't shoot him while he's in the water, he'll come up real fast, and you'll, he'll usually have one or two targets when he comes up. And this boss can be hard because he's pretty fast when he decides to attack. You can get a few points here. Uh, but otherwise, it's nothing to, you know, be stressed over, because he takes a lot of damage when you, uh, uh, when you, uh, when you hit him. So I just got a power bar there. When you collect three power bars, you get a life up, and, you know, you'll, you want to look out for those. Uh, let's see. Oh, so another thing about this one, uh, this boss, this is the only, uh, well, it's not exactly a dinosaur, but it's the only, like, prehistoric animal that didn't appear in either of the books, in either the books or the movies. So, it was really cool to see, you know, the developers choosing, uh, an animal that, like, was from the same period as the dinosaur, but wasn't exactly, uh, part of official Jurassic Park property. Not that I know of, anyway. If you look, uh, if you, sorry, look, uh, if you listen closely to, uh, Dino uh, sound bites, again, you'll notice that right there, uh, it's using the T-Rex sound bite again. So, I don't know, maybe they had a tight budget when they were making this, but it's, it plays amazing. And he just goes down. Sometimes when they're in their death throes, you can pop off a few shots to get, uh, some more points. Um... But, you know, if, if you're just playing for fun like I am, then it doesn't really fucking matter. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's keeping track of, you know, the highest score of the Lost World. Uh, stage 3, Enter the Dragons. Uh, this place this looks... So, the character says that we're in the Site B laboratory. It has, like, statues that are similar to 
uh, the dinosaurs, uh, the dinosaur skeletons from the first movie. Uh, however, uh, the Site B laboratory was never actually shown in the Lost World movie. Uh, the place that they went to at the end of the Lost World movie was the communication center. And I just died. Was that power bar really worth it? Yes. Because I have all the credits. Uh, so anyway, so, uh, they didn't go to the laboratory in the Lost World movie, they went to the communication center. Uh, so, you know, it was interesting to see that, you know, in the game they're like, hey, you know what, let's show places that weren't exactly in the movie, but were probably, um, in that location within the fiction of Jurassic Park anyway. So we get the lightning, uh, gun for saving that guy. So, just like with the grenade launcher that we didn't see, uh, the lightning gun has unlimited ammo, but it lasts a certain, uh, only a limited amount of time. Then we get another debris hazard here, and boom, I passed it. Um, so yeah, no, uh, so this place didn't necessarily appear in the Lost World, uh, but, you know, it's cool that the developers put it in. Uh, ironic, uh, I don't know if it's ironic, but, like, uh, fun, uh, funny enough, um, the laboratory, the cloning laboratory of Site B only appeared in Jurassic Park 3, which, you know, would come out in, oh crap, I killed the guy, uh, which came out in 2001, I think? Something like that? Uh, so yeah, so here we got this next part. If you look closely, that lock is actually the same lock from Jurassic Park 1, uh, but we gotta lock the raptors in, so you gotta memorize the code, and then input it the same way, so... If I remember correctly, I think I might have forgotten it. Nine, one, two, six, eight. So, oh no! Not, oh fuck! Fuck! Nine, one. Oh fuck! Yeah, I'm, just, I'm gonna fail it. Nine. Yeah, failed. Okay, so this is what happens when you fail it. The Raptors will break out, and then you gotta fucking shoot them. Uh, but not only that, you gotta run from them. And they'll come through this darkened hallway, and then you got the blast doors here, and you gotta keep the blast doors from closing. Uh, I'm actually I'm trying to concentrate right here because I've never successfully gotten past this. Uh, yeah, see, there we go. So if you don't make it there, if you don't make it through that, the raptors will come, and it's actually dark. So this is the only darkened part. Uh, actually, no, I'm wrong. This is, uh, the first darkened part of the game. Uh, but this is pretty difficult because the raptors coming out of the dark, you don't necessarily see where they're coming from most of the time. Uh, and then once you're done, you just go on your merry way to the next part of the, of the lab. And there you go. Doing pretty good with points, I think. So, stage four, their home. So this next bit is pretty like cool. Yeah, you know, try to get over to that dome. It's much easier on the PC than it is in the arcade, as usual. If you fail that, you have to face a bunch of raptors. And oh shit, what are we gonna run into? Yep, pterodons. So these guys are pretty easy. Sometimes they take two hits to uh, to kill, like that one did. Uh, or no, I got a snipe shot for that one. Uh, but otherwise, you know, they're pretty easy. Sometimes they come up to you like that. No big deal, though. And that's basically it. We got this huge dome. Again, not seen in the Lost World, that's fine. And this is the only, like... This is the other darkened area of the game, but it's not as dark as the, uh, the one that we just did a few seconds ago. And there's Ian and Sarah. Looks nothing like Jeff Goldblum or uh, I can't even remember the actress's name. Uh, but the, uh, like the movie, they're holding the baby T-Rex. Oh crap! There's the green one. And here we're in the dome. That area there kind of looks like um, the DNA holders of uh, that were in Jurassic Park One. 
So here we have our next boss. There's Ian and Sarah. They're running away. And who are we gonna face? We're gonna face the Carnotaurus. So he just appeared out of fucking nowhere there. Uh, that's actually pretty hard. Damn. Okay. Uh, how he appeared out of nowhere, we're gonna find out. If you've read the books, though, you probably know why. Pop up a few points there. Okay, so the guy said he's a chameleon-type dinosaur. So, this this uh, dinosaur was not in the Lost World movie, but he was in the Lost World book. In fact, there were two of them in the Lost World book. Uh, a character named Levine, uh, it's been years since I've uh, read the book, so, you know, pardon me if I get this wrong. Uh, there's a character named Levine, uh, he goes out, uh, outside in the middle of the night, and he goes to a shed, uh, for some reason, and he gets, uh, trapped in there, uh, by two Carnotauruses, and he noticed that he didn't see them at first, even though they were right in front of him, but he figured out that they were camouflaging like chameleons. Now, fucking clearly, uh, we know, or, well, we don't know for sure, but it's pretty safe to say that a Carnotaurus probably could not actually, uh, change color like that. But within the lore of Jurassic Park, uh, you know, it, it could be possible that, uh, the guys who created the dinosaurs in Gen, uh, they use chameleon D DNA as a placeholder for the missing DNA links when they were creating this specific dinosaur. Uh, and actually that's very similar to uh, the Indominus Rex from the Lost World. That was quite funny there, the way the Carnotaurus just slammed against the pole. Uh, but yeah, if you don't, uh, when he slammed against the pole right there, when I got that power bar, if you don't hit those targets right there, then you, you're gonna be brought back down to the lower level and you'll have to ride the elevator again. No big deal, though. So we're going up the elevator, but it's not done yet. Somehow, the elevator stops. Maybe the Carnotaurus stopped it, though how it could do that, I have no idea. He's pretty slow. It's not exactly a hard boss battle, because, you know, when he's like this, he's the only dinosaur that, like, stays still while the targets are up. Uh, it's only hard when he's running while the targets are up. Otherwise, this guy is a total, like, there's nothing to worry about. Really nothing to worry about. Can I get 20 hits? And he's dead. Pop off a few shots, get a few extra points. And there you go. He even has the chameleon eyes too, the, uh, the individually moving eyes. That's a pretty nice, uh, nice touch from the developers. Okay, last stage. Something has survived. So, we're going to the trailer, which is, you know, from the movie. That's a pretty nice touch, again. Wait, did I get- did I just get points for shooting the recycle bin? Oh my god. I didn't know that, that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, you gotta kill the compies, try to save the guy. Be careful not to shoot him. Oh crap. Good job. Yes! Alright. And he gives you an S power bar, which gives you a full life instead of, uh... Oh yeah, you get fucking points for hitting the recycle bins, look at that. Yeah, so the S power bar, uh, gives you one full, uh, life instead of having to, like, search for, uh, the regular power bars. Uh, so we're in the trailer. We're fixing up the baby T-Rex, and then, oh no, there's raptors in here! Get that power bar, three lives, and uh-oh. Uh-oh. T-Rex. And just like the movie, both the male and female T-Rexes are here. Once they break the glass, you can start shooting them early for points. And, uh, there's that. This next part here is difficult. I managed to do it. I always miss that, but, um... If you don't hit that raptor, uh... Uh, before it gets to the baby, what will happen is that Ian will say his line from the movie, Mommy is very angry, and then the female will uh, rip a part of the trailer's roof off, and then it will throw it at you, uh, and you have to shoot the targets to, um, uh, to destroy it. So this is the T-Rex female fight, second lost boss, uh, second last boss fight. Uh, she's going down pretty easy, I mean, like, it's, I have only 
been talking for a few minutes. She's already, like, almost dead. Uh, but unlike the other fight where uh, she was running and then she stopped running, she it was just completely running fight. Uh, she doesn't stop at all. Oh dear. And then it's not over yet. She's called her mate. She's called her mate. So we're gonna have to face the male next, uh, and he's the last boss of uh, the game. So phase one is like the female. He's gonna be running like this. Just gotta shoot the targets, and it's pretty easy. And then you can just get free shots like this, and then these guys will tell you to go to the right into the worker village. And uh, this is, I guess, this is the same worker village as the movie, but because the trailer is so close to it, I'm gonna say no. It's not the same. Uh, and yeah, so this is the final boss of the male T-Rex. Um, so if like if you look closely, like you'll see what I mean by how hard it is to shoot some of these targets, because the T-Rex's head is moving all the time. Uh, it's a little easier with the target, but um, you know when you're doing it with a light gun, it's very much more difficult. So he has this next section where he's trying to throw these cards, and if you miss that incredibly small target on his mouth, then he will pick up the cards and throw them. And here he comes again. It's best to shoot the targets as they appear, in the order that they appear. Uh, because they each have their own, like, time limit before they disappear. And, you know what, like, e even though we faced the T-Rex before, uh, oh wow, I was having trouble reloading there, I don't know why. Uh, even though we faced the T-Rex before, um, the male is the hardest boss in the game, just because he switches it up a lot, he tries to throw shit, and, oh crap, it's a dead end tries to throw shit, and then this happens. He's just standing there. Some dude is trying to shoot him. We gotta save that dude. And we didn't save him. So what'll happen, he hits it with his head, we gotta shoot this debris away, and then he fucking eats the dude that was shooting at him. When he does that, he regains health. Making your life a little more difficult. And then, you know, he does that too. That's really the only thing that makes this fight hard, and that and he has the most targets that appear uh, out of any of, of any out of any of the bosses. Uh, so he's almost dead. So that's good, but otherwise, like he's he's very difficult. I mean, well, not super difficult, but you know he's the hardest boss in the game. Final boss, right? So he goes over there. Too quiet. And it's too quiet. He just fucking appears over here somehow. And then, boom. Bingo. That's it. Pop off some free shots. Get some free points. And... That's it. That's the game. I'm gonna show Shuffle in a minute. Uh, shuffle mode as opposed to beginning and easy. Uh, beginner and expert. So Ian and Sarah come in with a helicopter. And that's the game. Lost World Jurassic Park. Uh, and the credits, you know, credit roll, it's actually a pretty short credit roll. Shows all the dinosaurs that you encountered. All the dinosaurs that you, like, actually shoot, though. You don't see, like, the Stegosaurus or the Apatosaurus. Uh, even though you did shoot the Apatosaurus. Uh, but yeah. So, you know, this is a pretty good game, in my opinion. Uh, I said this before, like, uh, this is probably my favorite, like, gun game, but then again, like, when I was a kid growing up with Jurassic Park, like, uh, this is just, you know, my bread and butter, and just, uh, like, I was a nut for this shit, so, you know, part, part of my love for this is kind of just based in nostalgia, which, I don't know if that makes it legitimate or not, uh, but, you know, I, I had a lot of fun with this, and I have a lot of fun playing this now, like, Jeez, like maybe 19, almost 20 years later, I guess. I don't know. Uh, wait, 97. <laughs> I'm horrible at math. Uh, 2000. Okay, so not exactly 20 years, but uh, 19 years, I think. 19 years later, and I think this game is still awesome. Uh, 
I didn't catch the names of the voice actors for this, uh, but I would love to know what they're fucking doing now and what their, like, thought process was when they were, uh, voicing for this game because the voice acting in this is fucking terrible. Like, no joke. I mean, listen to some of that crap. Anyway, high score screen. Uh, those are all my scores in each stage. I'm just gonna put my initials A, G, and C. So let's see how we did. Stage 1, got the top score, you can see this was my fourth time playing through. Stage 2, ooh, damn, fourth place? Mm. Stage 3, second place, not bad. Stage 4, fourth place again, motherfucker. Uh, well, whatever. Uh, and, oh, wow, uh, first place in stage 5, not bad. And total, hey, first place, first place, not bad. Game over. And yeah, they got the the Jurassic Park font too, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, uh, next we're gonna do uh, shuffle mode. And what shuffle mode does, instead of like starting you off on beginner or expert, what it'll do is it'll start you off on a random level, and the r levels will be randomized. So we're starting off straight at stage four. I've started at stage 3 before, like even stage 2. I've never started at stage 4 before. Uh, as far as I know, it will not start you off at stage 5. I should have done the fail state there just to show fighting the raptors, but it's not really a big deal. So, hey, we got the pterodons again. Actually, they're not pterodons. They got that huge crest. That's, that's not a pterodon. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm not sure which one this is. Uh, before I made this video, though, I did do uh, a little bit of research uh, looking at on the Jurassic Park wiki to see uh, which dinosaurs appear in this game. I don't remember the name of these guys, uh, but I know that like the the birds, quote unquote, that ap that appear like during the first T-Rex scene uh, are not birds; they are uh, flying dinosaurs or flying reptiles, what have you. There's Ian and Sarah again. Horrible fucking voice acting. Uh, I don't know if uh, if you listen closely to the music too. The music is fucking pretty bad as well. And you know, I can't, I can't really fucking blame the devs for that. Like you know, Sega Sega did a great job overall with the game, but the music is just just bad. But you know, fucking 1990s light gun arcade shooter. You know, you get what you pay for. It's not exactly quality. Uh, it's not exactly a quality product that the, that we're getting. Uh, not like today's arcade games, like uh, uh, Dark Escape 4D comes to mind, or <laughs> even the new Jurassic Park game that came out last year. Um, but you know, this is still a fucking great game. Actually, speaking of that new Jurassic Park game, there's a new uh, Jurassic Park arcade game that came out in 2015, uh, last year. <clears throat> and it was a light gun shooter as well. Uh, you know, or more so a rail shooter. Uh, but what it... Uh, I saw videos of it. I never played it. But it looked... I'm, I'm sure it plays fine, but it I didn't like the look of it because uh, they changed the colors of a lot of a lot of the dinosaurs, and I don't mean like they just you know swap color palettes. I mean like fucking pink and green raptors or blue and red triceratops and shit like that, or like the triceratops as a boss or like something like that. Like uh, like I, I just watched the, the trailer from. Uh, the, the people who made it on YouTube, and um, it just uh, didn't look quite good to me. What I did notice, though, from uh, that new game was that uh, the way the boss fights go, uh, they would usually be chasing you on a car while you're riding in a car or something like that, and, okay, so this guy, he knocked us down, that's the fail state. Uh, you'll be riding in a car and the dinosaur will... Uh, like, let's say, maybe it's a T-Rex or a Spinosaurus, it'll chase after you, you have to shoot it, but then at certain times, it will do, uh, it'll bring up targets on certain parts of the dinosaur's body, much like what I'm doing right here, right? Uh, 
And what will happen when the targets show up, uh, the dinosaur will start moving, or the game in general will start moving in slow motion so the player will have time to hit the targets. And, you know, in my opinion, that's just poor game design when you look at a game like this, which came out fucking years ago, and it doesn't have to do that slow down crap. Like, it, you just, you know, uh, you have a certain amount of time to hit the targets and you have to hit them. The point of an arcade game is to, you know, get as many quarters or as many swipes out of your little, you know, uh, arcade uh, swipe card uh, as possible. It, like, you gotta make money with these things. So, in order to do that, you gotta make it difficult enough so that, like, it, it can eat quarters or, you know, dollars or whatever, but you gotta make it fun enough for the kids to say, oh shit, I wanna keep playing. I need more quarters, though. Right? So, as you can see, uh, because this is uh, this is shuffle mode, we went straight from stage four to the stage before it, stage three. <clears throat> and uh, well, well, what can I say about stage three? I'm running out of things to talk about here. Uh, oh, cool thing over here! You can get points for uh, shooting those bottles at the bar, and then th there'll be cockroaches that come out. So that's a nice little touch. Nice little, uh, nice little touch there. And you got the stained glass windows, which weren't featured in uh, either the Lost World or Jurassic Park 3, or Jurassic Park 1 for that matter. Uh, I think they're just trying to emulate the, uh, uh, not the kitchen, but the restaurant from Jurassic Park 1 that had like the pictures of the, pictures of the dinosaurs, uh, it, but it wasn't stained glass. So, you know, they're just trying to do their own thing, and I think that's cool. But that's the thing with, like, licensed games. Um, when developers are given these license, uh, licenses to do these games, um, the best thing to do with them is, you know, you want to stay faithful to the license and, you know, what you're working with, but at the same time you want to, like, make your own thing so that it's a memorable experience. And, you know, for me, Oh, I just failed that one, so these raptors will come, uh, come a-knockin'. Okay, let's fucking try to do, uh... Oh, I killed that guy! Damn it! Um... We're gonna try to do that, uh... Uh, keypad sequence, uh, right this time. Uh, but as I was saying, you, you wanna try to make the... Uh, you know, I don't, I don't fucking make video games. This is not what I do. I, I studied English when I went to university. Uh, but... You know, when you wanna make a game... Like, I played enough games to fucking like, make an educated opinion about this shit. Um, when you're making a game, you want to make it, like, memorable enough and fun enough so that, like, you know, years later, people will remember it. I think I forgot the code. No. One, nine, two, eight, three, seven. Yes! Oh my god, that was, like, down to the fucking last minute there. My god. Uh, it's actually quite easy to remember, but because I'm talking, uh, while doing this, it's, uh, it's pretty hard. Uh, it was hard to remember when I was a kid, though, because, uh, you know, you're a fucking dumb ten-year-old kid, and you're not gonna pay attention to this shit. So, stage two. We're, we're actually working perfectly backwards, which I've never seen before in shuffle mode. We got the Apatosauruses here. I'm gonna do the fail state, uh, the fail state for that Apatosaurus that's taking a shit uh, in a few minutes. Let's get past these boys first, or girls, whatever. I can't tell the gender. It's 1990, 1997 graphics. Very cool though. It's uh, it's cool that. Um, they included uh, dinosaur enemies that weren't necessarily carnivores, but, you know, herbivores, like, uh, you know, these Apatosauruses, uh, and the Pachycephalosauruses. So, if you do, if you fail this, this is what happens. Shit's all over your fucking windshield, and you land right into the mud pit. Or it might be a shit pit, I don't know. And then, hey, who's coming to town? Raptors. There's another one there. Here. You can see the difference. You can kind of see the differences in color. You've got the male raptors, as I said before. 
and that's the female raptor that just jumped at me. Uh, this is what makes this sequence so hard. This particular sequence, they just come one after the other. Yeah, another thing I want to kind of like bring up uh, about the raptors. Uh, it's a lot harder to get the grenade when uh, you do that section, uh, but I managed to get it. And here it is. And it's fucking cool. You gotta lead your shots, but um, it does. It just wipes the fuck out of all these fucking things. Uh, I wasn't really thinking when I said that. Uh, yeah, it just wipes out real quick. Uh, one thing I like about these raptors, though, uh, specifically the way the animation is, um, when the when they jump during their jump animation, you can see if you look closely. Uh, ooh, oh, oh, oh! Can I save him? Okay, so I saved him, and he gives you the shotgun. Last 20 seconds, a lot longer than the... Oh, fuck, so much for that. Uh, a lot longer than the grenade launcher, but uh, it's, you know, it just one-shots them once it hits them. Um, the only problem with it is that it doesn't have the uh, best rate of fire compared to, like, the pistol or even the grenade launcher or the lightning gun. Uh, so it's a lot slower, and... You can suffer for that, so it's not exactly the best power up in the game. Uh, anyway, as I was saying about the Raptors, uh, when you look closely at their jumping animations, you can see that they bring up uh, their foot sometimes. And you know, if you're a paleontologist or if you know anything about Jurassic Park, you know that the Raptor uh, the Raptors tend to use their uh, toe claw on their feet in order to attack their prey, whether it be by kicking or slashing or whatever. And even in the, the first Jurassic Park book, uh, there's a section where I think it's Henry Wu, I believe he dies by a raptor slashing his gut open with, uh, with its claw, with its toe claw. And, uh, yeah, you know, I'm fucking... I like the raptors just as so much as anyone else, man. They're fucking cool. So we're here we have the Dinosuchus again. <laughs> Derp Dinosuchus, I don't really... Can you get points through the boat? Oh, no, you can't. It's very, uh, very Jawsy kind of boss. Because if you see just swimming around, sometimes you lose sight of him. Like right here, you don't know where he is, even though the bubbles are coming up. And, oh shit, he's right there. And sometimes, it's been a long time since I've seen that one. Sometimes he'll do that. He'll come up right beside you, like an actual alligator, and just, like, sit there like a log. So that was pretty cool. And here he comes. He goes under. And he's right to the... There he is. Got him. Gotta say, though, playing this as a kid, it was way more fucking uh, scary when he would pop up out of nowhere. Brings back good memories. Here he comes. Look from far away in that one. You don't see that too often. He's got four targets here. You know, it's a lot easier with two people playing, because, you know, you can get one guy to shoot one set of targets and get the other guy to shoot the other set of targets. I'm going to put in more coins. Uh, but with one player, it can be a little, a little too much sometimes. You know, even though there's not that many targets. Ooh, power bar. And there's T Rex Roar again. Yes, got the power bar. Life up, nice. Um, I'm not sure if uh, the life can go beyond four. I've never gotten more than four lives, but um, I don't see why they wouldn't put that in. Because if you're, if you're really fucking good at this game, it's possible to get... I, I suppose it's possible to get more than five lives, but I don't know for sure. So anyway, here we go. Back to stage one. Again, fucking shitty-ass music. Wait this out. Shitty-ass voice acting. Oh, Raptors. Get the power bar. And there's one right there. Females. That one was pretty fast. See, and you get uh, points for breaking those windows too. Let's 
see if I can save that guy this time. Oh, wow. I... What the hell? I didn't know the raptor uh, hitting the drum could cause it to explode. That's the first time I've seen that. That's fucking cool shit. Little things like that, those little design choices really impress me when it comes to shit like this. Can I save him? Oh, fuck. Let's save him. Ah. And, oh, oh. And, you know, these boxes will have bullet holes when you shoot them. So that's pretty cool. I don't know what those white squares are supposed to be on the building. Uh, what's this engine, but... I don't know what the fuck they're supposed to be. Um, on the building and on the, uh, the tanker truck that you see in the T-Rex fight, it'll say InGen Corporation. However, I don't think, uh, at least I don't remember, uh, there ever being, um... Uh, a mention of InGen as InGen Corporation, just, you know, InGen. Uh, International Genetics. Uh, so, I don't know. Okay, let's see if I can fucking shoot these raptors off this time. And I did it! Success! When you fail that, though, I mean, like, if you looked, uh, if you saw it real quick there, um... The, uh, the electric fences, it's real nice touch. You don't see much electric fences in the movie, uh, but, um, uh, the Lost World movie, you only see it when they get to the communication center. Uh, but it's pretty much the same fences as, uh, the movie, and it even has the same signs, uh, like the warning signs, danger, 10,000 volts. Uh, so it's a nice touch. Uh, for Site B, though, um, like, it definitely has more buildings, like, man-made structures than the movie. Uh, but in the book, the Lost World book, there are a lot more stru- it, well, it doesn't have much structures, but it has a lot more structures than what was shown in the movie. Uh, in, in the Lost World, anyway. Uh, in the book, if I remember correctly, uh, there are few buildings. There's the boathouse, which they used to escape at the end. Uh, there's the warden uh, house. There's the, the cloning laboratory. Uh, there are tennis courts and a pool. Uh, there's a gas station. Um, and there's a shed. Uh, but otherwise, there's not much building in the buildings in the books um, on East Sorna, or rather the book uh, Lost World. Uh, Jurassic Park 3, though, there were a lot more buildings. There was, like, the cloning lab, the aviary, there was the boat with the dog, there was that place where they, uh, fought the Spinosaurus at the end of the movie. Uh, and I, uh, maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but I thought, like, the portrayal of Site B in Jurassic Park 3 was a lot better than, uh, uh Site B in Jurassic, uh, Jurassic Park 2 Lost World. Uh... But, you know, that's just my opinion. Fucking flame me for it. Uh, agree with me. I don't give a fuck. I don't even know, like, what this place is supposed to be. Just that there's just some dead trucks lying around. I don't know. But, it's, it's not bad. It's a neat design choice. Okay, so here we are at the last stage again. Something has survived. Ugh. I'm gonna points for shooting the, those recyclables. No, no, not this time. Uh, yeah, so, gotta kill the compies. I'm gonna try not to shoot the guy this time. And, alright. Uh, what else should I say? Oh, well, the compies, uh, basically, they sound exactly the same as they do in the movie. Uh, it's only the Compies, the T-Rexes, uh, the Apatosauruses, and the Dilophosauruses that have their own original sound bites. Uh, meanwhile, the Pachycephalosaurus, uh, and the Dinosuchus, uh, reuse the T-Rex sound bites in, like, modified ways. Uh, actually, I think when you shoot, like, the Gallimimuses of the Corydosauruses, uh, during the lakeside level, uh, they will have, um, uh, 
custom sound bites as well. Oh shit. So, baby screams. Mommy's very angry, and then this happens. Rips off the fucking roof like a boss. And shoots at you, and I failed that, but that's okay. We'll meet up with the Shoot the Rex. And the battle begins. I actually quite like this stage. I think it's fun and awesome. Uh, but, um, you know, second time playing it, um, maybe you're getting bored of watching it at this point. Uh, the place we're at right now, um, I don't get why, like, there's a bunch of pipes and, like, industrial shit. Um, I mean, I, I guess that making dinosaurs takes a lot of energy, but, uh, I, I honestly don't get what they're trying to go for here. Uh... Mind you, the cloning laboratory that's uh, shown in the book and uh, in Dress Park 3, it's pretty much like a factory. Uh, but, I mean, you see nothing like what's going on in the background here. I don't know, maybe... I guess you're not really supposed to pay attention to the background, but, uh, you know, it's little things like that that kind of... Uh, I like to analyze. Not so much analyze as pay attention to, I guess, but whatever. Anyway, so start off in the uh, starting off the uh, Tyrannosaurus male or the bull, as uh, uh, that one character from the Lost World calls him, the hunter. I can't even remember his name. The guy that looks like Patrick, Patrick Stewart, but he's not actually Patrick Stewart. Uh, <clears throat> man, his throat's getting a little sore. So yeah, uh, they do good designs with the buildings though. F uh, fair design, I should say. So you got that like uh, Jurassic Park slash Safari kind of looking buildings. Like, uh, sometimes like uh, um, uh, what am I trying to get at here? Like it kind of looks like the visitor center, the Jurassic Park one. Is, I think is what I'm trying to say. Uh, some of the build some of the buildings. Sometimes the T-Rex looks fucking dopey, with those big yellow eyes. Like right there. <laughs> or right here. I'm gonna pick up the car! So yeah, that's what happens when uh, he, he throws the car at you. You uh, miss the target. But, I mean, uh, in the arcade it would be hard to hit that target, because we got the, the crosshairs here. It makes things a lot more better, a lot more easier. Like, if I was playing this in the arcade, I'd fucking... I'd probably be spending a longer amount of time with this than uh, I'd, I'd be doing right now. As with any arcade game, but, uh, you know... Such is the wonder of the internet age. When you have access to, uh, you know, certain uh, emulators and whatnot. Okay, so let's try to save this guy this time. Oh, no. Failed again. But yeah, if you do manage to succeed in that one, uh, he will not eat the guy and he will not regain health. So it just makes your life a lot easier. But you want to shoot him anyway, so uh, he doesn't regain too much health. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Ah, shit. Oh, well. <laughs> I know I'm definitely not, like, the best... Uh, best shooter here. Shooter games are no longer my forte, but like, uh, I, I love being a good light gun shooter. So he's almost dead. Again. And I'll show you something funny that happened in a few minutes when he uh, does his final push. Uh, come on, reload. I don't know why I have trouble reloading sometimes. Oh, uh, forgot to mention. Actually, I'll mention later as the credits roll, but right here, so he goes off, and he's gonna come through, but I'm not gonna hit him. I'm not gonna shoot him. It's too quiet. And I'll tell you why. Because you don't have to shoot him. He will just fucking die automatically, whether you shoot him or not. But yeah, as I was saying, uh... I forgot to mention earlier, but because I don't have a light gun, I'm obviously using the mouse. I don't know if the microphone picked it up, uh, but 
in order to play with the mouse, you'll shoot with uh, left click, but in order to reload, it's actually a little tricky if you're playing it for the first time, uh, in order to reload you have to hit the uh, right mouse button, which will cause the target to disappear, and then hit the left mouse button, and that will make the gun reload. Okay, so let's let's see if uh, the voice actors' names will come up. Stage designers, all the bright young minds—well, probably not young, but all the bright minds at Sega. You made this great game. It's great, like a game. Programmers, uh, okay. Takeshi, Takeshi's Challenge. Uh, I would never play that game. Oh God. Cabinet designers. The cabinet for this game, by the way, was a sit-in cabinet. So the cabinet was designed as like a, tr a, a Jurassic Park car, and you would sit inside and like pull the. Oh, okay, so the voices. So we got some uh, Japanese voices: uh, Douglas Sip, Richard Walker, Mark Sherrod. I don't know who the fuck these people are, but man, their voices were fucking horrible in this. Uh, if they're watching, though, I hope they. <laughs> I hope they don't get mad at that. I'm sure that they were, you know, uh, they were at the discretion of the director of the game, and he was like, yeah, nope, this is fine. <clears throat> and there we go, we got the ha big happy T-Rex family. And that is the Lost World Jurassic Park Arcade. I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure I covered everything there is to say about this game. Uh, I mean, it's a classic, it's a very classic light gun shooter. Um, you know, I, I said it before, I'll say it again though, like, this is probably one of the best light gun shooters, honestly. It's just, the gameplay is designed very well, you only have a certain amount of shots compared to, like, something like, I don't know, Time Crisis or, uh, uh, Dark Escape 4D or, other, or, you know, like, any of those, like, new arcade games now where it's like a rail shooter but you have unlimited ammo. Uh, it's like, there's not really a challenge to it. I mean, there is, but like, compared to this, like, there's no challenge to it. Like, you're always constantly reloading. You're always going, uh, back onto the screen. Uh, all while trying to, like, do this in between raptors coming at you or friggin', you know, Pachycephalosaurus is trying to headbutt you. <clears throat> but yeah. That's the Lost World Jurassic Park Arcade. My name's Professor Renegade. I hope you enjoyed watching this. And if you enjoyed it, leave a comment so that, you know, maybe I'll do more of this, uh, this kind of thing. Or, if you fucking hated it, leave a comment too. Try to make it constructive though, cause you know, nobody likes a troll. But, or you know, be a troll, whatever, I don't give a fuck. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, that's Jurassic Park, see you later.